Jesus Christ is first before, is called the Proto Evangelon, known as the first gospel. Mm -hmm. Because this is the first announcement of the coming of Christ. The first announcement of the coming of the Redeemer, the coming of the Messiah. All right. You see, God did not destroy Adam and Eve, which would have served justice. But instead, God revealed his covenant of grace uh, to them by promising a Savior. Right. Tell him they were very Christian. Now, God said, God said, God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Uh -huh. And between your seed and hers, this, this word enmity, it means hatred. Mm -hmm. uh, it means uh, antagonism. It means hostility. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, enmity uh, uh, has been waged between the son <coughs> and the woman all throughout history, even today. Mm -hmm. It's been said that many women are afraid of snakes. They have phobias of, of snakes. And that it all goes back to the fall in the garden of Eden. Right. And I'm always afraid of snakes. <laughs> I grew up as a girl on a farm in Mississippi, and I always tell people that I thought it was paradise until a snake would raise his head up. Mm -hmm. I could ride my bike, ride a horse. No matter what I did, it looked as though I always ran into a snake. <laughs> and I promised myself, Lord, just let me grow up. I'm going to move from this country to Chicago. And I did. <laughs> but it was safe in Chicago. <laughs> The 
personalities themselves. All right. And God instituted blood sacrifice to lay on the bulls and goats to provide a temporary covenant of the people's sinful lawbreaking and make them acceptable for his presence to dwell among them. The blood sacrifice was simply a representation of the one for all perfect of sacrifice Jesus Christ would make when he offered himself on the cross. church God uh, was at work in the affairs of the world to ready for the coming of Christmas. God made a way to bring his chosen people back into fellowship with him. Now, know what God instructed Moses to do. In Exodus 25 years, God said to Moses, he said, and let them make me a sanctuary. He said, that I may dwell among them. The word sanctuary, it, it means a holy place. Right. It means a hollow place, a place sanctified or set apart for God. You see, God had one main purpose for building the tabernacle, that he might dwell in a very special way among the people. Right. Unfortunately, when we read Jewish history, you discover that the glory of God that dwelled in the tabernacle departed because the people sinned. Amen. Right. Then there was the mind of the sons of David. 
uh, for the coming of his son. God knew that the law was weak and that it had no way of changing man's sinful nature. The law could not justify. It could only condemn. Uh, uh, God knew that his presence, that his glory repeatedly abandoned the tabernacle and the temple because of man's sinfulness. Satan so was doing all he could to devour women and her garlic descendants down through the century. And God knew, he knew that to restore what Adam had messed up, to restore the people back to their rightful place, to their rightful state, to restore the people and to bring them back to him again, God knew that he needed a perfect body to fulfill a perfect sacrifice to okay. take away all the sins okay. of the world. Come. Huh. 
she conceived of a child in her womb. And Luke 135 tells us, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So, so, so God sent us the greatest gift of all, his son Jesus Christ, into the world, who left heaven and came to earth. And Jesus was born of a woman. And not only was Jesus a birth of a human birth, but a Jewish birth. Uh -huh. Jesus was born under the law. Right. Now, being born under the law required Jesus to be subject to the laws that he himself created. All right. He was circumcised on the eighth day as all Jewish work. Mm -hmm. He grew up in a Jewish home reading the Torah, uh, praying to the Heavenly Father, attending synagogue. That the Son of God took upon himself human form and was subject to all the requirements of the Jewish law. And he met every one of all those right. requirements. Amen? Amen. Right. And verse 5 tells us, in the fullness of time, look, he redeemed those who was under the law. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. That Greek word for redeem, it means to buy back from. It means to purchase out from, a uh, rescue from. In other words, uh, Jesus redeemed those who were under the law. He redeemed those from the law itself. Amen? Amen. Jesus was completely obedient to the Mosaic law. He was without fault. And because of that, he became the perfect, sinless sacrifice required by the law to pay the penalty to our sin. But what the law could not do is that it weak from the flesh. Mm -hmm. God sent his only son into the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in, in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Yes. Yes. Right. Matters. Now I think it's important to note that, that at the time of this passage mm -hmm. Paul uh, was combating the heresy that was being taught by the Judaizers. You see, the Judaizers was teaching that the Gentile believers must first submit to the Mosaic law before they could be saved. The Judaizers was teaching that the Gentile believers had to undergo circumcision before they could be saved. And Paul was arguing in Galatians, he was arguing that, that if righteousness could be gained by observing the Mosaic law, then Jesus died for nothing. All right. He died for nothing. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. a redemptive price was paid, yes, freeing yes. them of sin and death, right. and they slaves for keeping the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, a legal transaction took place in which the Father, he satisfied all the demands of his own justice. You get that? He satisfied all the demands, because I know God is a holy and just God. He satisfied all the demands of his own justice and redeemed his people. Mm -hmm. A price was paid. Jesus gave his life to pay the penalty of our sin and to die in our place. Yes, yes. Therefore, the word says, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the Spirit and the life in Christ Jesus has set us free. Amen. For the law of sin and death. Amen. And then verse 5 goes on to tell us, in the fullness of time, Jesus redeemed those under the law, he had said, hallelujah, praise God, that we might receive adoption as sons. That's good news, amen. That we might receive adoption as sons. My brothers and sisters, in friendship with our person, this is. Believe in Jesus Christ. You see, God takes that person's sin and counts the person as being. 
gift, you know, they either break or they lose them, return to the store, somehow you can get, get there and give away to someone else. <laughs> right. But God, this gift is for all eternity. <laughs>
And if you are here today or you're looking by live stream and you are not saved, today is a good day to ask God to come into your heart. Christ not only came in the flesh, but he can live. Yes, he can yes, 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 yes. He can be incarnate in your life. Uh-huh. Right now, right where you are, here in the sanctuary, you're bolted on the sofa, you may be at work, whatever you are, you can receive Christ into your life and experience the incarnation of God. You can have Christ living in you, Christ in you, the hope of the Lord. Amen. 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 We all talk about the wings of the season. Christmas is all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I want to tell you, if you confess with your mouth, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And it's by believing in your heart that you may be right with God. And it's by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God is waiting. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. When you go to Him, you will receive His promise. When you accept Him as Jesus, as your Lord, and Savior, His eyes will be I pray, my brothers and sisters, that you receive the Holy Word today. And as we go through this holiday season, please let us not forget that Christmas is all about Christ Jesus. Baby Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.